Hi, my name is Gary Keating, Director of Golf here at the Club at Shell Point. I often get asked questions and basically people talk to me all the time about um, I can hit the golf ball good on the driving range but I can never take it to the golf course. The biggest thing about it is how we practice, that is the key. So when you're on the driving range you'll notice we're just hitting golf ball after golf ball after golf ball and we create a good tempo. So you hit golf balls every maybe seven, eight seconds. When we're on the golf course itself, you may be hitting golf balls every two minutes. So we're losing that tempo. So when people practice, and I see it all the time, actually on the, on the driving range and on the golf course when we play in tournaments and pro-ams, is basically pe people get out there and it's always the comment I hear, well, I hit it great on the range, how can I hit it good in the golf course? The way we practice is to basically take the muscle memory from the driving range to the golf course. So the next time when you practice, what I want you to do is I want you to place a club on the ground aiming at the target. And I want you to match your feet perpendicular to the golf club. I want you to hit some golf, go golf shots and then go back and actually look at where the divots are going. The most important thing about golf to keep the ball starting on line and staying on line is the club must go down the intended line of flight. So, for an example, if my feet are aiming at the target and my divot's left, it means I'm on the outside coming across the ball, so the ball is either going to go left or we're going to go left and leave the club face open so it'll be a slice. So let me show you an example. So I'm going to hit a couple shots right here, and you'll notice, especially on the PGA Tour and the LPGA Tour, when they actually play golf, if they do hit a bad shot, two things generally happen. Okay? Number one, they're looking at the caddy to see what's going on. And the second thing is they go back and they actually look at the divot. Because the divot will actually tell them where the path of the club is coming from. Most of the time when a player hits a bad shot, the divot is 99.9% .9 left of the intended target. So when it's left of the intended target, we're either going to hit a pull, pull hook, or a high fade. So what I'm going to do is basically show you how to practice and practice correctly because my job is to basically keep you at a, a better playing portfolio for a longer period of times. By doing some simple drills on the driving range you'll notice the golf ball will start a little straighter than normal and it'll stay straighter longer. When we do that we hit more greens in regulation obviously we have more birdie putts and hopefully the score gets lower. So I'm going to show you the best way to practice. So we're going to get two clubs right here so the first club I've got, I'm going to lay on the ground at my particular target. So I'm going to the blue flag right here. So when I come into my address position at this particular point, okay, I would come in and I would basically make sure that my feet are equal distance from the, from the actual club in the ground. So all of our life we've had a multitask for either somebody or somebody else or your own company. I want you today to multitask and start multitasking for yourself. So when you practice, take the club, place the club on the ground, and what we actually want is we want the divots to almost be like a set of railway lines. Okay, they should run parallel to the club on the ground. If the divots are to the left, we'll come into some of the solutions for that in just a second. But I'm going to make a couple bad swings right here, you'll, so you'll see my transition from the top of my swing down the club will go outside creating a left divot. Once I create that left divot, two things are going to happen. I'm going to hit it dead left or I'm going to open the club face at impact and it'll go, go high right. So on a drill I'll show you the actual club working from the outside to the inside. Then the next video I'll show you a couple of remedies on how to fix that because it's a very very simple fix. So I'm going to hit that bad shot right now. And once again, these are things you don't want to practice hitting bad shots. But we're going to look at the bad shots, so I'll go through it first. My alignment is good. The club comes up. On the downswing, the club comes out, and the follow-through goes left. So if I swing one without a golf ball, you'll see the club working from the outside in. And you've seen that club reroute itself on the, on the downswing. And basically, as soon as we reroute it, the club goes left, hits the outside of the ball. Unfortunately, we've got some errant golf shots. So I'm going to show you exactly what that golf swing would look like. So I'll swing this ball or this golf club and just go real slow so you can see it. So I've taken a divot here. So I'm going to show you the difference in a good divot and a bad divot. So what I'm going to do is place my club on the ground. There's my divot, 
So as you can see, we've now got some issues. So the divot's left of my intended target. So basically this golf ball is always going to be starting left of the intended target. So how we fix it, the quick fix is we aim further left or we aim further right. So you're always chasing the ball flight. So what I'll basically want you guys to do is to come back, back here, and now we're gonna look at the divot. It's gonna give us instant feedback from basically being on path, outside, and across the path line. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna look at my divot. Then what I'll do is I'll take two or three practice swings, and what we're gonna actually do is overcompensate. As soon as we overcompensate, we'll get the divot back straight. 99.9% .9 of the times, these divots are caused because we're aiming left. So if I'm aiming left, and as you can see in the illustration with the target and my shaft, my feet's aiming left, which might be a normal position for everybody. The club is going to follow the path of the shoulders. If my feet are left, my shoulders are left, now the club comes outside and goes across and it goes left. Now when we produce this particular shot right here, we're losing about 30 to 40% of the power supply. So the club is actually, it's wiping across the golf ball. So as it comes from the outside in, the club actually wipes across the ball instead of the club marrying the golf ball. So we need to look at that golf club and golf ball being married together. You'll see this kind of information they'll start talking about with TrackMan. You'll see it on the PGA Tour and LPGA Tours about smash factor. Smash factor, and it goes to 156, is when the club meets the golf ball absolutely square. Smash factor is 156 when that happens. When the club comes on the outside, if the club wipes across the ball, and the smash factor might go down to about 98. So, people are always looking to hit the golf ball further, okay? When we hit it further, there's a couple of formulas right there. Speed, club head speed is one. Smash factor is the number one key. If you get the club face square at impact, the smash factor goes up, solid golf shops go up, and distance, and even better, distance control goes up. So we're not only looking to hit the golf ball a long way, we're looking to hit it a required distance. Okay, so once again, if your divots are on the outside and the ball is going left, I'll give you the solution in the next video. So if you need to get in contact with me, you can call me at the Pro Shop, and that phone number is 239-433-9790, or you can reach me on the web, and the web page is theclubatshellpoint.com. Thank you.